Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the fourth video in my Python programming tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about decisions, so we're going to be using the if, else, and elif statements in Python. So pretty much I gave you a little example last time on what these are, but if condition equals true, then do this. Sorry, not his, do this. Okay. So pretty much the syntax for the basic if statement, which is what we are going to cover first, is like this. So if you remember my last tutorial, I talked about conditions. If you haven't seen that, go back and look at that first because that's going to be an important part of today's lesson and you have to understand that. So if condition is true, then we are going to do this. Now let's just dig into the syntax a little bit here. Um, so you're going to start with the keyword if. Then we're going to put a condition. So the condition could be something like this. If one is less than two, if tree is equal to plant, something like that. Okay. Anything that can return a true or false value, you can use variable names. You can say if X is equal to Y, anything like that is condition. And it uses a conditional operator like I talked about in the last video. And then you are going to end your condition with a semicolon, or sorry, not a semicolon like this, with a regular colon. And then you are going to simply click enter and it should tab you in one line. Now it's very important that you have this indentation. Um, if you have your code like this, it's not gonna work. Python reads the lines because of indentation. So it's very important that you have whatever statements you wanna run after the condition returns true, indented properly. And this will also be very important as we move further on in different tutorials and we have lots of different indentation levels within the program. Okay, so let's do a real example now instead of uh, this kind of pseudo code here. So we'll start off by just getting some input from the user. So let's say, let's get their age. Okay, so age is equal to input like this. And then just if you put something inside of the input like this, uh, it actually gives a prompt to the user. So we'll say input your age like that and then we will say if the age is equal to 16 then we will print to the screen hey your oops 16 like that okay um, all right, so let's go ahead and just test it out right away. I know I haven't really explained it, but I just want to show you how this works. Okay, so we have input your age. So I'll say two as my age, and we can see that nothing happens, okay? Um, now I wanna show you one more. I hope you've caught this trick already from what I talked about in the last videos, but we'll see. Now you notice here, I'm gonna put in 16 and nothing's gonna happen. Now, the reason for that is because 16 here is different than the 16 that we get from age. If you remember, whenever we're getting a number or anything from the console, we actually get it as a string. So this 16 that we're getting actually looks like this. Now in Python, again, we have different data types, right? So this is an integer data type. Well, this is a string. So when we're comparing integers and strings, um, they're different. So we have to convert our age variable into an integer before we can compare it like that. Okay, now we'll try again. Say if int age equals 16, so now we put 16 in and says, hey, you're 16, like that. Okay, um, perfect. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, now we can also do some other conditions. So let's do a greater than 16 now. Okay, so this is another conditional operator that we talked about before. Um, and yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll try it now. So we'll say 15. Now, nothing happened because obviously 15 is not greater than 16. Now, if we put in 17, it works. Okay, great. Um, all right, and also uh, I just wanna show you there's another operator that we didn't talk about last time, a conditional operator, and it's the greater than or equal to and the less than or equal to. So to convert your um, greater than sign into a greater than or equal to sign, all you have to do is add an equal sign like this. And now anything greater than or equal to 16 will work. Whereas before it had to be strictly greater than 16 and same thing with the less than sign, 
like that, okay? Uh, I just forgot to talk about it in the other video, so I figured I'd put it in here. All right, um, great, so let's go into another example then. So let's say, um, it's great, it's telling us we're 16. Um, or let's, in this case, we're going to be older than 16, right? So, hey, you're older than 16. But what if we want to message when we are younger than 16? Well, the way to do this is using something called an else statement. So the syntax for this, uh, it simply has to come after an if statement. You can't just leave your own else statement like this. That will not work. It has to be after an if statement is placed. And then all you have to do is put a colon and click enter and make sure the indentation is the same as the indentation for the first if. Okay, so now we're just going to print you are younger than 16. Okay, and we can go ahead, we can try this to see if the else is going to work. And we say, well, we're 15 and you are younger than 16. Great. Okay. Um, so just to explain this a little more, how this really works when we're reading through the code. Well, Python reads code line by line like this. Now, when it reaches this if statement, it checks this condition to see if it is true or false. So since this condition um, was false in the last example, we say if false, it says, okay, so we're not going to run this line of code. We're going to skip to the else statement and we're going to do this. Okay, so if we had typed anything in that does not return true, so makes this condition not return true, then it would do go to this else statement like this. Okay. Um, yeah, and then same thing, say we type in a number 17, um, and that is greater than 16, it's not going to do the else statement, it's just going to do the if statement. Okay, um, I hope that makes sense. Now we're going to go into another layer. Okay, so let's get into a new example here. Um, let's talk about height for a roller coaster. Okay, so for some roller coasters, uh, you have to be taller than a certain height, and you actually can't be too tall, right? So again, we'll get the input from the console. So we'll just say height is equal to input. And we're just going to do this in meters, like one meter, two meter, three meter, just to make it really easy. Okay, I know that's not a realistic height, but just for the purpose of this is example. So we say height is equal to input. Um, Again, we have to remember that when we're going to check the condition, we have to make sure we put it in the int because as we get it from the console, it's going to be a string, okay? So we'll say if height is less than one meter, we're going to say you cannot ride. So we're going to print to the screen, you cannot ride, okay? Now, we only want to allow the user to ride if their height is in between one meter but less than two meters, okay? So as you can see, I've introduced a new word here called L if, all right? So this means if this condition up here is false, then we're gonna go to this one. We're gonna check if this condition is true or false. If it's true, we're gonna run whatever's in here. Um, otherwise, we're gonna keep going. So you can have as many L ifs as you possibly want um, in a decision statement like this, okay? Um, you can only have one else though because else is just the default, so anything you type in um, that doesn't equal any of these statements, so like if isn't true, elif isn't true, the other elif isn't true, then it'll go to the else statement, okay? So elif, the height is, so if it's less than one, you can't ride, and if it is greater than two, you also can't ride. So we're going to say, you cannot ride. We're going to say, and we'll say over two meters. And then we'll put here, just so we can distinct them, under one meter. Okay? And then now we're going to add in the else statement like this. And we're going to say, print, you can ride. Okay, so I know I just did a lot there, so we'll go through it quickly. We pretty much have a condition up here. We already talked about the if statement. So if this condition is true, we're going to print this and we're going to skip everything else. We're not even going to bother reading it because we know that it's not going to be any of those conditions. Okay, so now we do the elif here, right? So we say, well, if this condition's false, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to check this condition. So we say, oh, well, this one's true. So then we're going to execute this line of code, which is the print, and we're not going to do this else statement. Now, say we go through these two and they're both false. OK, so this returned false and this returned false. Then we're going to go to the else and we're automatically just going to print whatever is in the else statement like that. OK, so we'll go ahead. Uh, we'll run the program and we'll try it out. Make sure I haven't made any errors here. Okay, so the input um, I didn't give a prompt, so I'm just going to type in the height uh, a number. All right, so we'll say one. You can ride. Great. Okay, um, that is because again we have the strictly less than sign. Now, if we wanted it to be, you have to be over one foot. We just put an equal sign here, and then same thing here. Okay, so we'll do that, and now I'll show you again. If I put in one, you cannot ride under one meter. Okay, so less than or equal to one, right? Okay, um, let's try again now. We'll do it maybe a number greater than two. So let's say we put four. It says you cannot ride because you are over two meters. And then again, if we do like a decimal number, maybe uh, 1.1. Okay, so we've run into an error there, that's fine, uh, just because we can't convert a floating decimal point into an integer. But yeah, I hope you get the point from that example here. Um, these are just the basic if, elif, and else statements. I'll do one more just to show you here. We could do another elif here saying, for example, um, if int height is equal to, remember we do two equal signs, right? Not one. Then we're going to say print wow you are tall okay so as you can see we can do infinite elf state elif statements like this and we can only have one else statement and one if statement at the beginning okay uh, so we'll run this one just to show you one more time how this works I'll put in five so five uh, you cannot ride over two meters oh, okay so that's per because what actually happened here is we went if we checked this condition now it turns out that um, 5 is greater than 2, so we did this one, and we didn't bother reading the rest. Now, if I wanted to change this uh, so that it would check the 5 first, all I would have to do is put this elif statement, I'll do it right now, above the other elif statement, like this, and now, if I type in 5, it'll work. Wow, you are tall. Okay, so uh, that's it for the if, elif, and else statements. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to go into something called chain conditionals and do some more advanced examples of this. We're going to do some addition, subtraction, and some more things with other operators. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe the video, and I'll see you again tomorrow.